In the last episode of Zoo Sicily, we finished up our beautiful Jaguar habitat with this wonderful plaza. Today, it's actually time to move forward into something very new that is actually beside this area. To the left-hand side, going down the road, we are entering the new area. Just a couple of you guys did know what exactly we are going to do, but today it's obvious we are going to do the panda habitat. Now, let's move into it and I will give you a very detailed explanation of what I have done here and why this is pretty special and I would consider this one of my most well thought of habitats I've ever done and also one of the best habitats when it comes to a realism aspects paired with a creative outlet. So this one is made up of four segments. Um, the reason for having four segments goes very much down to the specific of the panda as an animal in the zoo. Now we have to understand a couple of things. Let's first of all talk about the, um, the fact what is happening to get a panda first of all into your zoo. So the panda is uh, an animal that is obviously a fan favorite it's only black and white so these two elements i told you guys last time it's quite interesting that not too many people um, came up with the panda because i haven't really done much with the panda we will talk about some habitats i did in the past in a couple minutes but let's first of all talk about the fact that you need to get an official license to have a panda from the chinese government and also, I think there is a fee from about a million, um, like kind of rent you pay, like a million. I'm not quite sure if it was for a year or in total, but you have to pay them and you will never actually own that panda, which is a good thing. You should never own an animal anyways, but um, you never own the animal as a zoo. You only rent this from the uh, Chinese government, uh, even though it would die in your zoo or whatever out of, you know, um, being elderly or age reasons or whatnot, you will always be um, only the person who rents it from the Chinese government has, you know, it has a lot to do with um, how special these animals are to the country itself, to the region and how endangered they used to be and still are. Now, this is very important just in general to talk about because um, whenever you have a habitat like this, this means you already have quite some money put into it and some effort put into it. So this is also the reason why most of the panda habitats used to to be and are very nice indeed and also very modern uh, simply because not too many zoos can afford that and those zoos who can afford this will have to make a good habitat. So this is the, the story behind and this will translate also in the way of how we make this habitat over here. You guys have been asking for a uh, olive grove a million times. It's not exactly going to be one, but it's going to be like an olive tree park in which the panda habitat is merged into. I can only tell you, and you've seen that potentially from the screenshot uh, or the thumbnail, but not too much actually. I haven't given away too much from the thumbnail today. Um, it's looking phenomenal. And this is one of the, the, the few rare occasions where you can't put this in a screenshot. It's, it's simply impossible. You have to really experience that. And I'm super happy because the whole habitat is an experience. Um, it's really like a park in here in, in Sicily. It has the vibe of Sicily. It, it maintains the Sicilian vibe while still um, focusing on what the panda does need. And you can see this very bridge over here uh, is one of the two cross points um, that go above this uh, wonderful little park area. And then we've got also two tunnels that go below, the, uh, as you can see in the background, by the way. Um, there are a couple of little things I have to fix. Um, I'll do that off screen later on. You'll see that in the real time part. There's a couple of little things I will show you um, that we have to fix, but all over the, the whole experience is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, I really can't tell you how long it took. Uh, there was a lot of planning involved and um, there was a lot of force and back and, you know, some some iterations I have gone through before I came up with this very specific one over here. Um, and so that's that. This is the first bigger block I needed to talk about. So this is why this is special. The second block I need to talk about is the separation of the individual animals. Now, mostly pandas kept, are kept um, in a single, like, single habitat because they don't really like each other. They are only brought together for, you know, mating. And uh, usually you do have either just one panda and then you just exchange with another zoo for mating or um, you do have two, but you will have the ability to separate the habitat. And especially this is one of the core reasons why I went with this design of uh, four individual spaces, because each of them will be 
um, getting a, a gate, you know, there, there will be a gate in between those areas so that you can close off basically um, the one or the other. And so you can make sure that the animals have a way to separate from each other. So this is the, this is the main idea um, behind this whole uh, situation over here. So this also goes back to the very single habitat I've ever done like this, and that was in Yosemite Valley Zoo. Um, and I think you know Yosemite Valley Zoo is obviously the predecessor to Zoo Zisli, if you will, even though I have to say, at this point, I'm already quite more in love with Zoo Zisli. It's just normal, because my knowledge, the game's you know development and stuff, um, obviously is a huge advantage for the new project, even though obviously in terms of uh, fame and in terms of views and in terms of engagement, uh, Yosemite Valley will, I think, ever remain unbeaten. Uh, this is going to be, uh, in history, my best project ever. But, you know, you guys have the strength and the power to change that. But therefore, you have to send this video to a million people or episode one or whatnot. Um, but yeah. Also, let me just quickly point out this um, fence design over here I came up with. I've never done this before, but I love that. It's one of the Twilight Pack um, gates, which is actually looking a lot more gothic um, and it n shouldn't really fit that well. But if you sync that all in, um, it just creates this wonderful little um yeah almost like steel garden fence vibe and it's a lot more thinner than the other ones we have in the game uh, so it kind of creates a very zazillion vibe like a very parkish vibe i had a bit of a struggle to bring in the actual feel of Sicily while maintaining the panda habitat vibe it's not the easiest thing to do and let me also quickly talk about the bridges i built um they are based on one of the more um well-known bridge designs in Sicily. i was a bit confused to why they have this architecture in and just you know went in and i saw that there's a lot of arabian uh, influence into it as well and this is why it looks a little bit more pointy like that and not as round i mean in Sicily you do also have some very roundish roman inspired um architectural influences but you also do have them from africa as well and so this is why or like arabia africa so this region also ties in there sometimes and this is why you also have this type of bridge design um which i'm a big fan of because that just kind of brings in some um yeah, some more exciting differences in the architectural style. And also big thanks to all of you guys commenting in the last weeks that you are still very hyped about this project and that you guys have the feeling that the architectural way I was approaching it still works and that everything gave the Sicilian vibe. Obviously, the biggest compliment for me is when people from Sicily or from Italy do comment um, that this looks like it looks you know, at home for them, uh, because obviously this gives me the, the biggest uh, smile, simply because these people are the, yeah, you guys are the ones who can judge it the best, I guess. If you have the feeling, hey, that looks like where I live, I basically have done what I needed to do. And I think, you know, you always, you don't have to be that super strict to yourself. Sometimes you can also use some other elements that wouldn't necessarily be there. But if it if it just kind of ties into what you want to sell and it helps to emphasize on something, just go ahead and do it. However, we are now eight and a half minutes in. We haven't even talked about the new pack, the DLC and the free update that we will be getting in about one and a half weeks time. And um, I'm very, very happy that I, I, I will be able to finish this habitat before because there are so many core changes to the game that we will have to do a couple of things first of all in this project to before we can go on um, which will mostly go down to the lions um, i have to redo the lion habitat now with the new mating system or not mating system the whole sociality system um, and the same goes for some other habitats um, we are getting the sloth as like a walkthrough exhibit habitat animal what wait what did i just say walkthrough exhibit habitat my god a walkthrough exhibit animal there you go uh, i really hope it's versatile i definitely want to make a habitat for that one um, and we just have these tropical animals which I think I'm going to start, but you guys can vote in the comments, you know, let's do it that way. If you made it that far into the video, you deserve to be able to vote for that. Let's, you know, let's take this video as a vote for which animal should we put first into um, Zoo Zisli. So shall we go with the fossa? Shall we go with the Red River Hawk? Even though I don't, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> Red River Hawk, the um, Lara Gibbon obviously is also uh, in there, the Sloth, you know. Um, and the last one, I'm too stupid. What was the last one? I forgot. I'm so stupid. What was the what was the other animal that we get? Oh, the um, Asian water monitor. There you go. Um, so please let me know which of those five you want to see first in Zoo Zisli. 
Um, it's quite funny though, because I think it's the first time ever, even more than with the butterflies and bats, that I do count the sloth as a proper animal, because I think the way how I would do a habitat for it is pretty similar to the habitat itself for it. I mean, I made a whole video about this. If you haven't seen that, my opinion on the sloth as a habitat animal, um, or like a non-habitat animal, that way around, um, you should definitely watch it because there are some good points in and I found it very interesting that you guys seem to agree with the vast majority to my points, which is interesting because I thought that I had a little bit of an unpopular point here, but uh, apparently it's not. Apparently it seems to be very popular, which is good because it seems like we have we are having a point here. Now, um, let's talk about this habitat a little bit more. I mean, we are going to see that in real time in about five minutes but still um this this was a lot of fun doing it playing around with different stones and stuff i wonder if i shall put a couple more of these white-ish stones that i did with the um four rocks you you can comment if you feel like we have to integrate a bit more but on the other hand i had the feeling that this habitat works pretty nicely without it simply because as i said it might be a bit more of a modern take on a habitat a bit more of an expensive one anyways and so um they went without the typical Sicilian white rocks because you know in the trivia of this project the white rocks we are having in here they are not four rocks actually the other rocks we are using sometimes technically would be four rocks and the white ones that are made out of in-game four rocks are definitely no four rocks they are basically the um, Sicilian kind of white-ish um, chalk um, Chalkstone. Is it called that one? Is it sandstone? I think it's chalkstone, isn't it? But yeah, it's these kind of typical white washed out stones that we are using throughout the project to maintain this kind of Sicilian South Italy vibe, Mediterranean vibe. And I feel like in this specific habitat over here, it works quite well without by still having the same vibe going on. You can see I'm doing a lot more detail work here with... Um, with the terrain just to really get the exact like steps in the exact elevations like i really wanted to make sure that this looks good um and then we uh have to talk about someone from the community and that is the the wonderful Kormiomi, uh who has to take a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of fun from my side um but he's doing some incredible incredible enrichment um signs for us which you will see in the real time part later on um i'm going to put them in here for the panda he did really really lovely ones they are looking phenomenal huge props to omi but he also sent me a picture of a panda habitat because obviously he knew that i was doing one cuz i needed these enrichment boards uh, that's why or the education Boards, not enrichment. I'm I'm I'm, I'm mis mixing words here. Enrichment is the wrong word. It's education boards. Why would he do enrichment boards? If he could do enrichment mods, that would be awesome. But um, first of all, we are starting with the education boards, shall we? <laughs> but yeah, there was also one picture he sent me uh, of a habitat he was thinking of, and um, they had this beautiful swing in there, um, and I made my one myself. Unfortunately, it's not usable, and I can't really seem to get them in. I have a couple of ideas um, how to fix that, but I will fix it once the new update is live because otherwise it's going to be broken again and so it's kind of double work so i don't fix it right now but it looking it's looking pretty nice so even if it's not working even after the update i don't care too much it's a kind of cool little element in here and the habitat is big enough anyway so yeah closing off a couple of things in the backstretch um I'm still, I'm still very intrigued to do the backstage in a live stream. I'm very sorry that I haven't done a live stream since, but I, I'm still not having proper internet here. I'm still running on an, a freaking LTE little stick. We are getting each week the message that we can't get real internet here, so they have to do some huge technical works, new cables, blah blah blah. I'm not sure why exactly it, it doesn't work. Like we do get proper internet, but it's so slow that I can stick to my LTE stick anyways because it's slower than LTE or 5G. Um, um, so why would I change then? And it's also not more stable because it's on a freaking old copper cable that is not really doing its job in your house. Um, but yeah, it's like really typical German internet issues. It's nothing that uh, would surprise me, but it's definitely something that does annoy me. Uh, I can't really do too much about it other than being upset, but you know, I try to not be because it just doesn't help. Yeah, I'm putting in a couple of plants in here today, I'm going to be a bit more heavy on the planting just to ensure that it gets a bit more of an overgrown vibe. And again, I'm trying to stick with the Italian slash Mediterranean fauna as much as I can. So using a lot of plants that would realistically grow, grow there as well, and then pair them with some plants that 
could grow there, but usually wouldn't. So um, also, you know, more you know more bamboo that you than you would usually see. I mean, bamboo does basically grow everywhere but yeah so that's that and now we are going into the real time part i really do hope you guys are excited for that one you better should be now let's do the there we go we are back and we are starting off where we left off last time this is the jaguar habitat but we want to go to the left hand side and you can see already one of the small signs i just said this is the ja panda gigante um, and we're going to go here you can see the resort you can see how threatened it is i love this educational board but we we follow the road and as you can see it is already quite dense we have quite uh, some uh, olive uh, trees going on over here and you can see already one of the um, habitats uh, areas i should say um there is one we can maybe explore later on as well but if we go further you can see on here there's everything closed off a little bench to sit on um and there's just another educational board over here to the right hand side nice one as well and then you have got this first look into the biggest part of the habitat this is also where the backstage area is and there is one of the swings or the swing i actually talked about um if we cross the bridge we are on this little plaza which i think looks not only for normal but it's it's feeling so cool it's feeling so just mediterranean and sunny and you just want to stay here you know and it's also a good idea to stay here because you have from this central point you've got four ways to see the panda you've got this area in the back you've got another one there you've got another one here and you've got another one there but everything is just kind of hidden giving them the privacy they need as you can see there's like also like a double layer here so you don't go too close to the edge uh, well actually we do so you just jump over here there you go uh, we can't see one not sure where they are but yeah um so this is that and then you can obviously also go like a little tour so in here you can see there is not a, no one over here but then we've got another sign and you go no further uh you go further and then you go no further you go further and then there's like this bridge you're crossing uh while going down through here you've got another peak into the habitat and to the right hand side there's also like a little peak now um you can see there is also like the bridge that crosses over here i will make a connection to this spot but i made this intentionally because this is going to be filled with something else i have some ideas and then we've got this wonderful overview of the river and there's also going to be a waterfall over here and i just wanted to have this overlook this is uh, the idea that you have like this wonderful overlook here to the waterfall area i uh, can't wait to do that but once you go further you get another glimpse and you can see i walk with the different height elevations to have like more eye level with the animal but still have like a separation so that they don't really uh, get too close to you i closed off this side so you don't have too much to see and then if you go here we are back to the plaza but then there's like another educational board oh look at that there's one very much up close with us uh, I forgot to put like another fence in here. Usually you shouldn't be able to get that close to the animal. This is rather dangerous over here. Uh, I've got to fix... As I said, this is one of the issues I need to fix. This is definitely not allowed. You should not get as close to the people as this is. But, you know, for the showcase reasons, that's great. Um, yeah, and just to show you how the habitat for itself works, um, we do have this area as i said over here with the ramp and um, this ramp obviously is getting a separation uh, there has to be like a second ramp that goes down here so that the uh, habitat can be split in exactly this area so there's going to be like a split that can be done uh, in the middle as you can see there is already a way to split the two areas of the backstage area um it seems to be there's one animal not unbox there you go um, and then, you know, you continue with the habitat and you've got these two areas. One can go to the right, one can go to the left, and then one gets, like, these two chunks, the other one gets de these two chunks, or however you want to do it. You can just fence off the bridges, uh, or this separate area down here will get a gate, and so that's the easiest part to do so. Hello, you. Um, okay, so let's uh, go out of this mode into the free look mode and show you the whole thing from above, because, as I said, it's very hard to showcase did you just tumble down there? Did you just die? What happened? No, you're not. Okay, this is th that was weird. Did it tumble down? I didn't see that. Anyways, um, so the habitat itself is quite nice, but I think the area around it is what really matters. And the little park vibe going on over here, as I said, I'm going to do something else with this region. 
our the view down here to the river is nice so it just all ties together and i think it fits in this spot super super well but yeah okay let's wrap this up for this episode um this is the park area you are greeted by a couple of little things will be done as i said it's not like fully done yet but there is going to be um a lot more in the future i am mega happy with the output of today's episode i'm mega happy with how the panda habitat work i really hope you are excited that we did the panda habitat um i certainly am and also if you're excited for the DLC, you may should, uh, you may should, you, you may stick to the channel because we are going to do a lot, a lot, a lot with the DLC this time. Um, I, I, you know, I plan some holidays when the game releases or the update releases, so I have some more time to do stuff for you guys, also to relax a little finally. Um, but yeah, don't forget to vote in the comments which animal of the DLC we should do first for Zoo Sicily, and also have a wonderful weekend ahead, guys. Um, yeah. Just enjoy your time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I told you in the last video, it's a pretty extreme how many people do send me some private messages that they just figure out they haven't been subscribed even though they thought about this. YouTube is weird. Sometimes they just delete subs or whatnot. But uh, make sure to check if you're subbed. And if you're not, do me the favor to do so because it helps me out a lot. And we are just about 10 subs away from 80k or so. No, not 80k. 79. 80 is a thousand away, but you can do it. Uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Have a good time. Stay safe, everyone. I talk to you in the next one, and goodbye.